All right, hey, welcome to our last FXR wrap-up show of the series. Hard to believe another summer has come and gone. We're at Walton, racing's done, here we are. The weather is perfect, the track, man, let's, uh, let's talk about what happened here. We'll talk about uh, what we saw. Let's get into it, Greg. Yeah, last one of the year. Last one of the year, so we're sitting on the track. Uh, they added a ton of sand. Uh, I thought it, uh, this was a real motocross track, I would say. It didn't really get huge braking bumps, but the ruts and the rollers and things, that's the way I saw it. What did you think of the track? Yeah, definitely the dirt looks a little bit softer. Uh, it kind of seemed to fluctuate a bit. Some, at some points of the day, it was really kind of harder, hard packed, more hard packed than I thought it was going to be. And then I just walked the track, a little bit of it anyways, uh, just before we started this, and it's, it's a lot softer. Some it's certainly a lot more ruts and, and stuff like that. So it's... Uh, yeah, it's definitely different. I mean, it's, you can see some of the ruts are a little bit uh, wider too, because from guys blowing through them and, and stuff like that. So, um, I mean, different for sure. And I will say this, uh, the guys, the gang here, Barry Hetherington and the gang, um, they broke a, broke a piece of equipment, went and borrowed a piece of equipment, that piece of equipment broke. So this morning they were scrambling, they did what they could, and it, uh, I thought it turned out well that there was no dust. They no, got the dust down, they no, did a good job of that. Uh, I was really happy with that. So. Yeah, it seems to be like they, you know, I heard positive things all week. Uh, just Barry, Barry worked his butt off. and uh, I don't think he slept yet. He's probably, he's probably sleeping right now. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, and uh, so. All right, well, let's get into the uh, get into the racing. Um, yeah, so we mentioned the broken tiller, the weather was good. How about the, uh, I'm gonna say this. I go over to, uh, I have to keep going back and forth to use some Wi-Fi over the shop. So I go over there and that's where they park the spectators. So I go over there and I'm on the Wi-Fi and I hear the guy parking people, Brett Lee goes by and he goes, hey Brett, what are we gonna do when this area gets full? Man, I'm like, wow, I don't think I've heard that before. And it, and it did get too full. Yeah, I had a, I had a moment today where I was uh, taking a break from the racing. I just kind of looked over and I always forget this where they park all the spectators because they're so involved with everything over here mm -hmm. and it switched, you know, after, as, as a few years ago. Um, and it was packed. Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, it was great, and there was people everywhere. Like, I'm riding around on a bicycle trying to get through. I'm like, man. Yeah, you almost there. couldn't ride a bicycle there. I had to go around the edge of the track, because it was you really, yeah, it was, it was dangerous. Yeah, it was tough. There. Yeah, it was really tough. And I, I mean, it was great to see. Like, we talked about it at uh, San Delis, that there was fans. Uh, Deschambeau had a fair amount of fans. I mean, the Quebec uh, people come out like crazy for any sort of motorsports event. But here, uh, there was a ton of people. There was, you know, two, three deep in certain sections. So, yep. awesome. Yeah, it was actually, my old buddy showed up and he said, man, I can't even get to the fence. I can't even stand yep. at the fence in spots. The whole fence was lined. It's a good anyway, problem so, to have. Amazing, yeah. So that was great to see. I talked to Mel. Mel was just thrilled. I mean, it was amazing to see. Uh, so kudos. I don't know if, you know, the fact that Zach Osborne was here, I'm sure helped, but the fact that just they did a lot of promotion, she said. They spent, they threw some money at it, and so it looks like it paid off, and it was cool, really cool to see. So uh, anyway, it's also cool to see a lot of guys. Uh, we just finished the Transcan, of course. So a lot of uh, intermediate riders threw on the pro plates and showed up. So. Uh, that was cool, although we didn't have full gates. I mean, there were only 34 riders in the 250 class. Yeah, I, f I feel like there was close to, to full gates in the 450 class, but uh, the second moto was like 28 guys in 250s. Yeah, it really um, dropped. It was really yeah, weird yeah. watching live yeah, timing. Uh, I think just, you know, some injuries and things like that. And um, yeah, it was weird to see those kind of numbers though. And uh, speaking of injuries, we'll get to the, uh, uh oh, someone trying to blow up a bike over there. Uh, anyway, speaking of double class, there was a lot of nonsense going on. I mean, uh, uh, Tyler Medalli was going to drop down to the 250 class, so he was out there, qualified first, just ripped it. Uh, so then, of course, uh, Tanner Ward says, you know what, we're going to do the same thing. We're dropping to Montana, well, didn't say it. The team said he dropped down, so he had both bikes out there for yeah. practice and qualifying. Neither of them raced the 250 uh, motos, though. Uh, well, Tyler did. Ty well, I'm sorry, Tyler, Tyler got Tyler it. Tyler did. That's where the, that's, I'm sorry, sorry. That's, yeah, we'll Tyler get to that. Did. Yeah. Tyler did, but then we'll get to that story. Um, Tanner did not. No, Tanner did not. I didn't see him in either one, and, and right. I think he, you know, 450, he was in a good battle. I mean, he got the, the did he get the whole shot for his motor, or did he just get a really good start? I forget. But he was leading a few laps. So I think he kind oh, of yeah. decided, hey, I'm going to stick with that. And I know he was looking at going after Moff from the points. So I think he just wanted to focus on that. Right, right. So it was interesting. There was a, a lot of stories we were following along. Um, Josiah Nats Natsky, he didn't race the 250 class, he raced the 450 class, so that was cool. So yep. all kinds of little things like that to talk about. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so let's get to the 250 class here and just kind of cover a couple things. Um, as I'm moving up the, up the thing, the first thing is Sam Gaynor, I guess, uh, I didn't know what happened. Uh, I just, he just disappeared. Uh, he's marked as a 31 DNF. Um, it's obviously a DNS. Yeah. For at first moto, we heard he crashed pretty hard and had to go to the hospital. Yeah, that's what, uh, yeah, Dave Bell actually told us. But I didn't see him. I saw, I, I saw him in practice and that's, I thought, I knew he was out there. And then uh, I think I saw him at the very beginning of the first moto. Yeah, so I guess he just went down and, uh, and God, is, did Dave say he got thrown into the catapult? I didn't know. Well, that. he said he came, somehow it got weird on the, the catapult jump over the pro finish line and that's where it went wrong. So uh, anyway, he, 
took a trip to the hospital I was uh, with his teammate we'll get to that uh, so uh, yep. rough day for the SSR boys um, yeah but he did win the premix uh, so that was the highlight of his day for sure uh, hopefully he's doing all right Sam um, but uh, yeah so that's the first thing and then uh, just finishing well marking has finished here Tyler Medallia sorry that's why I was thinking of him earlier that uh, that he didn't race of course he did he was killing it he was leading his teammate uh, he was leading uh, uh, Mitchell Harrison Ty for yeah in the first and then boy a uh, uh, bad crash yeah Tyler was uh, in practice and qualifying so I'm like I'm like holy smokes this guy he was killing win. it Look, this guy's gonna win he rides a 250 very well and it's been so many years since I've seen him ride one I think 2011 Blackfoot days oh I did it a couple years ago he oh sorry the Cowie right? I remember yeah, yeah. that yeah the Cowie wasn't a great yeah, expedition yeah. then yeah. but today crushing it and then uh, yeah it was leading the first moto and kind of pulling away a little bit and then uh, I I heard uh, a bit of a engine failure or something happened um, and then obviously you went down on the finish line uh, just after it. Yeah, now I heard that too, but then my friend was saying he was watching and he looked over and he saw nose down, but the engine revving hard. So I don't know if it lost, I don't, so I don't know. We don't, yeah, know. we don't know. At this point, we don't know. But anyway. Knows that Tyler's, uh, Tyler, I've, I've been told nothing broken. Uh, he is getting a second scan in Stratford for his head because he did it. He did oh his boy, head. yeah, yeah. So his head hit first. He had a nice uh, goose egg starting there. He had a his shoulder was all. They cut the shirt off, and I was expecting to see worse when I got over there. But uh, they had him in a sling, and you know, Tyler being Tyler, he, he almost wouldn't without <laughs> without being able to see the bumps and stuff. He really wouldn't know. Although he had a real pissed off look on his face. What else is new though? He always looks a little cheesy. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah. yeah. So hopefully he's doing all right. Good to see. I mean, obviously he's got those two big things coming up. He's got ISDE coming up. He's got Motocross of Nations. So let's hope he's okay. He did really bang his head pretty hard though. So we'll hopefully he's good and hopefully the shoulder's all right. Yeah, thoughts are with you, buddy. Yeah. All right. Um, also, man, three in a row here. Boy, sorry for the bad news here, but uh, Dylan Rempel, the Kawasaki rider, was looking good, wanted to get out there, and uh, he had a crash. It was just before the step down, I believe. He crashed and awkwardly kind of tweaked his knee. So he ended up, uh, he, he was, he was out 29th, uh, scored in the first one, and then didn't line up for the second one. So tweaked his knee. They figured, you know what? Let's just uh, let's just sit this one out. Yeah, I guess I I honestly didn't know. I saw him out there, and then I feel like there's so much going on today, and so many different storylines to follow yeah. that I just I just missed. I, I thought he was out there, and then I guess he wasn't. So you know. <laughs> yeah, he was there, and then he wasn't. Yep. All right, now we're we're gonna jump up here again. There's a, the area filled in here was. Um, full of new new uh, new pro riders it's kind of cool to yeah. see some guys did leave the intermediate plates are probably on probably gonna still stay intermediate next year didn't get get moved up or move up but uh, a lot of guys did so that was really cool to see um, moving up uh, just a quick shout out here to Zach Ufemzap there's a he was way 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 back came back for a I want to just mention him 14 12 for 13th not where he wants to be but considering he was basically dead last he came up through the field so a good good job to him yep that was impressive. Uh, moving up here, cool to see Preston Massiangelo back here again racing. Nice to see him. Uh, he ended up with an eighth place in that second moto, so he was strong. He was in a good battle, a good three-way battle for yeah, most of that race. second moto, him and Weston were actually going at Weston Rosina, uh, so that was good. I like to call Preston Stretch because he's just so tall. Uh, he's just, he grew like a weed, so uh, um, you know, looks good. He's starting to get more comfortable, I think, in this scene, and, and he's doing better. He, like I said, he was a top ten in that second one. Yeah, uh, which, which was, yeah, was pretty good. good, pretty heavy hitters. Yeah, yeah, and uh, breaking into the top 10, Wyatt Kerr, good uh, good rides from him, 10-9. And Noah Viney, it was cool to see him up here, all the way from yep. California. There are Ottawa folks that live in California now. He went uh, 10, uh, sorry, he went uh, 6, 10, so uh, for 8th overall. Um, I know at the very beginning of the day, there's Ulf, his dad, Ulf Viney, checked out the bike and the, the swing arm was cracked. So they had to, they had to, he had a, a spare bike, so they ripped that off. They were replacing the swing arm. Yeah. So that was a bit, a bit of a fire, fire drill, drill for yeah. sure. Got out there. Um, uh, he's having, he's going through a bit of a, he had some trouble at Loretta's. He fell a bunch of times in his moto, so not where he wanted to be. I went over and tried talking to him. He wasn't exactly cheery over there, so uh, I didn't get a whole lot from young Noah, but uh, yeah. uh, good things in the future for him. He's got his hang with it. Uh, he's going through a bit of a, a tough patch, I would say. Yeah, he's just getting used to the big bike, and, yeah. and he's doing like a lot of big races and, and really fast classes, too. I mean, the kid rips starts because he's so small. I mean, he could uh, still be racing schoolboy and stuff. Essentially, you know I mean? yeah. Like he's so straight he's off a great minis. starter. And uh, I mean, not just because he's small, but but a great starter. He was up front in both motos. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he did, he did whole shot that moto or close to it yeah. in that one at uh, Pala. Um, right. So, that's yeah, right. Yeah, so he's going to do well in the future. He's just going to be going through this patch and, and he'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, just ahead of him, finishing in, in seventh was Tanner Scott coming off last night. I mean, you couldn't. Every five minutes we were talking about Tanner Scott. He was up on the stage winning this, winning that. And then he gets the bronze boot. He gets the Rick Joseph award. Okay. I mean, he just killed it, Tanner Scott. So he ended up uh, going 8-7 today for seventh. 
I mean, the Solid. kid, the uh, future's bright, man. Did you see him during the week, man? He looked like just so professional. Looks so good. Yeah, I wonder where he's going to land if he does, you know, his own thing next year. I heard gets... a rumor. I heard a rumor they want to do their own thing. Really? Yeah, that's what I heard. But I also heard he could be uh, getting a bunch of su a lot of support from. Eh, we just don't know at this point. I heard two different things. So I know he's got offers, but I also heard that they want to maybe do their own thing just to kind of ease him in. But we'll see. We'll so, see what happens. And Jim Scott, you're probably watching this going, no, what are you talking about? So, Jim uh, still hates me anyway, so we're not really worried about it. <laughs> no, Jim's fine. I know, I'm just kidding. Uh, Weston Rosina, team player, dropped down to get uh, 250 for the MX-101 team. Yeah. So they had a guy 7-6 for sixth overall. That's your guy? Yeah, that's my guy, Weston. Everyone knows Gangnam that. style? Yeah, that's my guy. He uh, is still pretty injured, pretty sore. He's got a lot, like not a lot of uh, strength in his right shoulder and arm. Um, you know, you can see that he's battling. Uh, we'll get to him, but him and Quinn, it seemed like when Quinn, well, we'll talk about Quinn in a second. But yeah, well, Quinn's Quinn, right ahead of him, so. Okay, we'll talk about Quinn. So Quinn, uh, I was went, impressed went to, with Quinn's riding today, too. Uh, first moto, the kid was an absolute freight train. Came through like a oh, rocket yeah. ship, and there was yeah. no stopping him. So he actually, Weston passed him. Weston kind of got lit up again, and they were both put in some of the faster lap times of the moto, uh, the two of them, and they were oh, you yeah. know, five and six, uh, nice. something like that. So uh, Weston will be back for Supercross. You know, we know he's got the skills. I'd be looking for him to be a real threat on the indoor style tracks. Excellent. Yeah, we mentioned just, it was kind of funny, Quinn, because he, he charged up and all of a sudden he's in fifth place. I'm like, man, what a moto. Then I turned around, the race ended. I'm like, uh, I didn't see Quinn. Then I was talking to the team manager over there and I go, did Quinn finish? Is he all right? And he goes, yeah. And he goes, wait a minute. And then he ran. He had to run over here because he's like, maybe he didn't. So he was kind of worried too, but of course he did. He went 5-5. Five, five. We just missed him somehow. But yeah, Quinn, kind of... he seems to be really battling with a lot of injuries too. He showed me he's got a huge bruise on the back of his leg from his hamstring. Oh, still the hamstring. Yeah, yeah we remember that. Boy, when yeah. he got stuck with uh, Jeremy Mackay. Yeah, so he's having some issues there, but uh, obviously he'll get that figured out. But that kid is, uh, he's fit and he's just, I'll say he's just hauling ass. Like he's, yeah, he's yeah. just, he just got to get. With a start. We need, he need he to just start, needs right? to start. Yep, for sure. All right, now Sebastian Racine, 4-4, steady, uh, steady Eddie there. He, uh, late in the motor, was closing on the guys. I mean, great season. He ended up on the podium in the season. So, I mean, Sebastian, impressive. Seb, yeah, Seb was really just, he was quiet today. You know, yeah, he's there yeah. and, uh, you know, but he's improving. He was, he was and, moving in, yeah. And, uh, you know, we'll see where he ends up next year. I know he's going to be the KTM, but I think it's, it's uh, you know, if he's a sole 250 rider there or whatever's going to happen, I don't know, but he's, he's kind of filling that gap that he needs to and, and, and maturing in that role. Right, and uh, okay, so Ryder McNabb goes into this one with a big, big lead, what are you, 23 points or something like that? Yep. Pretty good lead going in, so knew what he had to do. He had to, if he went seven, eight, and uh, Mitchell Harrison won both motos, he would be fine, they would be tied in points. So that, that's what he needed to do if Mitchell Harrison won both motos, which he did. But uh, so he's out there, you could tell he had the pace, he just kind of was uh, riding within himself. Uh, he looked good, he kind of started moving up and could have started pressuring if he wanted to, but he didn't. He went to uh, three, three, took the title. What can you say, man, Ryder looked great. Uh, showed maturity beyond his years. You know, I keep forgetting just how young he is. And, uh, you know, he just knew what he needed to do and got it done. And, and we see so often guys in those kind of pressure situations, uh, you know, fold. They, they get in their own head and have their mistakes or mechanicals or whatever. And obviously, you know, the GDR Honda guys are dialed. Uh, his mechanic, Braden, uh, you know, made sure that bike was 100%. And uh, he just had to do what he had to do and he got it done. Now he's a All champion. Right. And how about uh, how about this guy finishing second? His best. It's got to be his best ever, right? Two two for second overall. I don't think he's done that before, has he? Nope. I think he's done a third before, but not a not a two two for two. Uh, Jeremy Mackay, man, gets that ride when uh, Jake Piccolo gets hurt. He's in there, and uh, you know he wants to be ahead of Sebastian Racine just to kind of get himself in there. He wants a factory ride. He thinks he just he knows himself that he deserves it. He really wants it. Heck of a bicycle rider too. Yeah, the guy's Strong got an bike. aerobic engine. I say he, yeah. he absolutely blew the doors off me. So yeah. that's uh, that's I mean that's to be, to be expected. <laughs> but uh, he rode really well, and I'm not saying this to like to put him down, but he surprised me. Uh, you know, he didn't really put in a ton of great results before. He was kind of hit and miss, and then today yeah. he just crushed it. Like he was just. He looked really good while well, you weren't here, obviously. But uh, during the Transcan week, I did see him the final moto. Looked right, fantastic. Yeah. Like yeah, he, he just looked good. like he belonged to be battling for podiums and wins. Man, he looked good, and yeah, I feel like he's turned a corner. Like. Turn that pager and mentally he knows he can do it and that's yep. so important at that level obviously. Yeah, he's so. a big kid too and he's uh so I thought maybe more 450 kind of guy, uh, but he seems to really ride the 250 well. So uh, it'd be interesting to see what happens, right? Hey the KTM trailer's moving. Where are they where are they going? All right, yeah, so uh, he was second, and Mitchell Harrison did what he had to do, and of course he won a Tyler medallion there, that's why he was in there. Tyler would kind of maybe be the uh, kind of be in there, and if he could, he would mess up the points if he could, to, you know, get in there, but uh, Yeah, play a little chess match. Yeah, a little yeah. chess match, do what he could, right? The team player, you're right there, you got, yep. got a guy, you got to try to help him out, but uh, anyway, Mitchell Harrison goes 1-1, one, one. 
ends up, uh, well, thanks to overall, obviously. Uh, says he loves it up here, loves it up here. I, I think that everybody kind of welcomed him pretty well too, so. Uh, yeah, we, we go back to round one, maybe not so much, but he seems to be really accepted and and uh, hopefully he comes oh, back because yeah. he's, he's done quite a good job. He's a nice, really nice guy and, uh, you know, today he crashed it. He looked really good. Yep, so good for him, closing out on a 1-1. The team over there is pretty happy about that. So the season, uh, Ryder McNabb takes it. Harrison finishes second and Racine finishes third. So that's oh, good uh, for Seb. I didn't know you got third of the points. Good I, for him. I hope I'm not wrong, but I thought he was up there. Yeah, he was. He was. But uh, yeah, so that's how that's how that went. That was the 250 class. What a season! Like I say, I can't believe we're at the final round already. But uh, yeah, it was cool. And of course, we had the uh, because, as we all know, uh, Dylan Wright has clinched the 450 title. So we did the no. traditional the traditional number ones doing whips and stuff over there. So we were over at the natural double. That's why things were a little late tonight. That's why the uh, results weren't up right away. That's, uh, that's why the interviews, uh, it's, We had stuff it's, going on. A lot of stuff goes on in the final round. So I, we didn't want to miss the team photos, the burnouts, the jumps. So so I apologize for that, but uh, that's, that's where we were and that's, and that's why. So, all right, let's get over to the 450 class because, uh oh, we're running late. Uh, okay. <laughs> all right, let's go. Uh, first, first thing to talk about, we mentioned Chris Blackmer. Uh, he crashed and Shoulder? Yeah, shoulder. I was told his shoulder, yeah. Yeah, I saw him in a sling over here. Yeah, apparently it wasn't that big of a crash from what I was told. Uh, I didn't see it, but I was told it didn't seem that big, but, um, you know, we don't know that. He's he maybe had a previous injury or something like that, but he was... he was. Uh, I'm sure he does. Yeah, yeah, poor kid. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but he was uh, DNF in second, or first and second, I think. Where, where was well, that? yeah, he would have been 30. He went at DNF, DNS, I think. Yeah, that's how it works. Yeah, but yeah. I think he got scored, but anyways, whatever. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's uh, move up here again. Uh, what were we had 37 riders officially on this on this list here. So uh, 37 riders, lots of stuff going on in the middle there. Great to see all the guys uh, jumping up here. I was the first. I want to say, did you see Brendan McKee 991 there in that second moto? He was up battling with the, with the top guys. No, I didn't see and, him yeah, in that I one. I thought, what, what, wow. Oh yeah, he killed it. And he stayed up there. He ended up tenth in that one. Good for him. Yeah, he's yeah. kind of shown us some flashes of brilliance yeah. and some real speed. So I know he spends a lot of time at club in the winter. So hopefully he can kind of take that. And, yeah, he's putting and the time fine in. tune it. Yeah, it was just cool to see him up there. He he was up there for a while. He definitely did kind of move back. I mean, those, he ended up like I say tenth. But uh, wanted to give a shout out to him because that was an impressive ride there to finish out the year. He's got to be pretty happy with that. Uh, Zach Osborne, obviously the number one of the number one stories. We had a lot of number one stories. Never heard of him actually. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, Zach was up here. Uh, awesome guy, super happy he was here. I mean, the guy was a 2020 AMA Outdoor 450 champ, and he's a Supercross champion. Like he, it's, you know, we've had some really big players come up here over the years with Davey Millsaps and, you know, other guys. Um, it was really cool, and I expected things to, to go a little bit different than they did. I actually was right there when he crashed, right before the rollers just slid out. Oh, and is that where it was? Yeah, yeah, it was, oh, right, yeah, it was right there. Unless okay, he crashed okay. somewhere else as well. But oh, I, I'm sorry, I, I thought that. it was a start. No, no, he crashed uh, uh, his first moto. Slid out. He was coming into oh, battle okay. uh, with uh, Dylan, I think it was, or Tanner. Oh, okay. So I'm sorry. Tanner, I, I, I think. I and, uh, took him out. Sorry. Yeah, no, he slid out and uh, kind of got stuck under the bike a little bit. Bike was pouring out coolant. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, so I don't know what happened the second moto, but uh, you know he was pretty twisted up after that. All right, and interesting too. Like practice, him and Dylan, they got right together. They were kind of like cat and mousing it yeah. for sure, and qualifying and practice and stuff like that. So. It was the big thing was, you know, was he going to be able to break the streak? Uh, turns out, no, the streak was safe. We're going to get to, well, we'll get to that. I think we all know what happened there. But uh, then uh, he, he kind of, uh, he, well, it's funny because I talked to someone and they, when he came in and they said, uh, yeah, but are you going to be able to do it for 30 minutes? And I guess he kind of winked as if, oh, yeah, don't you worry. Well, I don't think. Uh, well, I think he went down. I think he had more jam, but that, that when he crashed. The crash kind of did it. Yeah, he seemed to be kind of, bike, maybe bike was twisted or something. Uh, and, yeah. Whatever. But And uh, the second moto was, uh, the second moto was his first turn crash. Uh, and then he pulled right into the mechanics and then left. Yeah, I don't know if he went. I didn't see him go down. Did you see him go down? I didn't. I, see, I took it on video. I, I shooting video, so I. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know. I, I kind of missed the start a little bit, but I know he, he did like half a lap or like not even a few corners and pulled in and. and yeah, done. I watched him. He rode right through the, the mechanics, then he rode off and rode yeah, back. Yeah, so. done. So I don't know. I don't know what happened, unfortunately, but. Uh, yeah, the problem, these days are just so damn busy that we don't even have time to get over and, and do that. But uh, pit reporter should have been on that one. Oh, I was sleeping. <laughs> just kidding. I wasn't actually. I've been sleeping in days. But uh, anyways. Yeah, just, I don't know what really happened with him, but uh, great to have him up. Love to see him back again. Super nice guy. He was super chatty on the bike ride. Just a cool dude. Uh, we'd love to have him back up. And and uh, yeah. All right. Uh, cool to see RJ RJ Roy. Did we just say Roy or is he a Wah? I think he's a Roy. I think he's a Roy. He's an Englishman. He's an Englishman. Yeah, 1311 for him. Just, uh, just you know, I was kind of wondering who's the 714 during the week there because he was racing. I was like, hey, RJ Roy's back. Cool. Anyway, cool for him to see him 11th. Uh, uh, T. Parrot was uh, 10th. 
And Liam O'Fair, how about that second moto, man? He's up there in fifth. I, I'm like, there were some crazy battles. All by battles. himself. Yeah, all Absolutely by himself. By himself. <laughs> I don't even think he knew he was in fifth. I know. Like, he was just there by himself. I was like, holy smokes. Like, I didn't see probably... what happened in the first one, but he's a 15-5 for ninth. So uh, something obviously happened in the first one. I don't know if it was a start or... I don't know. I didn't see yeah, that. Yeah, I'm not sure. But anyway, the fifth and that second moto was impressive. So good for him. First moto, I will say the lappers, uh, they got into lappers really quick. Right. Um, so it, it, things got really messed up after that, and I kind of lost track of who was where other than the top couple guys. Cool to see uh, Nate Mason, a good friend of Chris Blackmer's there. He's uh, from Georgia. He, uh, number 103, ended up eighth, 9-9. Nine, nine. Felix Lopez, a 6-8. He, uh, I think, was he down in the fir first turn too and had to come back through the pack in the one moto? Man, he, was, he looked good. He got, to, again, he ended up on his own and stuff too, but uh, he ended up seventh overall. Yeah, he looked good, actually. He's pretty aggressive uh, coming through. You know, just seems to have some bad luck and some crashes and stuff, but uh, yeah, it looked good. I, I was joking with this mechanic, Joe. It looks like he's wearing uh, football shoulder pads underneath his uh, jersey because he rides with his, his shoulders up. Oh, it's yeah. kind of funny riding style, but it seems to make it work because he's not a very big guy either. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, and then ahead of him, Sean Moffenbar came into this one. He got uh, he got run over pretty badly at the Transcan here doing it in the Pro-Am moto. Uh, so he's been hurting for that. And so they went into this one. Uh, KT just said, listen, you need 8-8 eight, eight to stay third. Do that, uh, so he went out eight six, so he didn't give himself a ton of room. Jeez, but, uh, sweating. But uh, yeah, and I was watching, and I didn't really know how the extent of how bad he was feeling, but I was watching like, oh, something's up with Moff. Oh, he looks like he's <laughs> he's walking around pretty yeah. sore. Yeah, yeah, but good to see he was able to hang on to that and grab that third place. So three gets three, that's cool. Keelan Messon showed up, raced during the week, raced today, looked great. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna I'm massive gonna, hand guards. Yeah, big hand guards, big guy. I'm gonna say I think his gate prep uh, was a real big factor in how well he did today. Cause that oh was, yeah, you jumped in. Yeah, I jumped in. You know, sometimes you got the weight. Got to do. Yeah, I kind of, you know, thanks a lot, Bill. But uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, you know, Carlson Racing teammate of mine. Uh, you know, Brent, Brent, Brent sure. texted me and sure. saw me on the on the TV or on the on the on broadcast. the TV on the TV on the internet. <laughs> and uh, anyways, saw us up there. So yeah, it, I mean, it's great to have Keelan back, and hopefully he does a bit more racing next year. Yeah, and he was down in that first turn crash too. And had to charge up. There are a whole bunch of the good guys were at the yeah, crashed up and had to come through. Up and a rear oh yeah, was, I know. I kept looking at what's he looking at? Yeah, rear fender, <laughs> rear fender was uh, flapping away too. <laughs> so he was a five seven for fifth. Not where he wanted to be, but the, considering he was down, it had to come through. So that was good for him. Good ride, uh, I'd say. How impressive was Daniel Elmore? He was also down. Came back to fourth in that second moto. The guy was flying. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I kind of wondered if he was going to be able to, to kind of back up his uh, some of the good results he's had uh, last little while. But uh, I mean, obviously he crushed it. If teams aren't looking at that kid, they should be. Teams should be looking. If you're looking for someone, you want a Canadian, Daniel Elmore should definitely be on the short list. Yeah, it's, I, it's, it's, I, I mean, is Courtney Lloyd's going to give him up or not, though, because Courtney loves that guy. 7 4 for fourth, the kid. I mean, he, he was flying. The kid yep, looks great. Really doing well. He's, he's on these, as I like to say, he's trending upwards. He is trending upwards. <laughs> and uh, Josiah Natsky, we mentioned him. He raced the, the, uh, the 500, I almost said, the 450 class. Uh, he's racing uh, the open class in the uh, Motocross of Nations for New Zealand. Wanted to get some testing, wanted to get some riding on the bike anyway, get a race under his belt. Uh, uh, looked good, had that oh my frightening gosh. crash. My my buddy, as I like to call you know, my buddy Josiah, uh, just looked unreal in practice. I honestly wondered if he could win. He looked so good. He was mm -hmm. only like 0.4 seconds or something like that, or a couple of, you know, point whatever, off of Dylan and uh, and Zach. And I was like, holy smokes, like where did this guy come from? Uh, obviously New Zealand, but uh, yeah. you know, it was really good, and he was he got good starts. Uh, you know. Rode really, really well. Huge crash. It's on uh, Triple Crown, I think, Automoto Co. Those guys. Yeah, yeah, Brad okay. caught it, boy. Even slow, Of course, he slow mowed it, so if you want to watch it. <laughs> That's I just can't get enough of you guys. You too. Um, yeah, anyways. but tell you a horrible crash. He's doing like helicopter this way. Well, that's the way a helicopter goes, I guess. So he, he was cartwheeling side. Well, anyway, he he wasn't it good. Could have been worse. Yeah, I could. He's. I asked him after the moto. I said, "You okay, buddy?" And he goes, uh, "He's like, yeah, my shoulders a little bit banged up. But I'm okay. He's like, more in my heart than anything." He said, "I'm happy to walk away from that one yeah. on the stage." Yeah. He said, "So uh, yeah, <laughs> just, you go, Huge go watch crash. the video. Yikes! Yeah, it was a scary one. But he got up. He ended up three three. Still ended up three. Still held third in that. So three three for third overall for him, man. He's uh, the guy is fast, fast and fit. Yep, and uh, yeah, yeah, and lucky. And how uh, how impressive was uh, two two for Tanner Ward best over, best ever 450 finish? Yeah, kind of a hometown kind of race for him. He seems to have his uh, you know he's he's big here at Walton. He's got the the bike ride, lead and, laps. Yeah, and racing for for mental wellness. Uh, you know he's doing a lot here, and, and he seems yeah. to have fans and people get stoked to see him. And he doesn't yeah. have like a fan club or anything, but there's, I always hear people cheering him on specifically. Absolutely, so, yeah, yeah. Um, grew up here, you know, racing here from little kids, so uh, feel good story for sure. For sure he was. And like I say, he led some laps, he was up there, he got a taste of it. And he was uh, just pressuring, pressuring, pressuring uh, um, 
Zach Osborne too. He was yep. coming. Yeah, he got by him. Then he just battling him, chasing him down. And then when they said when he messed up, then he ended up with a two two. So a very impressive ride for Tanner Ward. Um, yeah, good to see that. And of course, the streak. Man, that second moto. What did he win by? He said a minute. 20 minutes 16. I heard Dave Bell say minute, minute 16, 16 officially. And I don't know if he won by that or if he, he might have won by more, but I heard the minute 16 a few times. And it was and, incredible. Uh, the one went 1 1. And, and honestly, I say this with all respect. Thanks, Dylan, for such a, a boring season in a way <laughs> because uh, the kid just crushed it. He, he deserved it. The GDR Honda team, you know, bikes were dialed, never had a mechanic, like no mechanicals, no flat tires. That's that you is know. amazing. And, you know, uh, you know I, I'm going to give a quick shout out here to Justin Packer. And I know that was kind of a shout out to him. Uh, they did it on the podium and stuff like that, but uh, he's worked for some pretty big guys, Colton, and uh, you know, got him through all the championships that he yeah. won on Hondas. And uh, now Dylan, and you know, I don't know last time a GDR Honda had a mechanical on a 450, to be honest with you. Um, just, just awesome. He looked awesome. good and he won that award too. Courtney gave him an award last night. And of course, uh, or was that today? Today. Was that today, sorry. Today, and I'm obviously, <laughs> he's a shy guy, very shy. I'm yelling out, speech, speech. And he's like, I am not talking. So he did not want, he just behind the scenes, does his work, does it very well, does not need the accolades. We're giving you accolades right now. Yeah. But does not want to, he didn't like the limelight. He just does not like it. No, good job, either. buddy. Awesome. Awesome. Good yeah, for yeah. you. So that is the, uh, that is, that's a wrap. I mean, uh, see, so, okay, so Dylan takes first. Tyler Medallia second, Sean Moffenbeier third. That's your that's your season. Uh, Canadian top three. No, uh, yeah, Canadian top three, which is nice to see. No real surprise there, I don't think, in the in the overall finishes. But uh, nope. That's the season. That's a wrap. This is now the final night at Walton. We're gonna hang out and see what everybody's doing. Yeah, have some social time, I guess. Have some social time. We're, uh, we're now we'll into uh, Supercross, the indoor outdoor part yeah. of uh, the Triple Crown. Yeah, yeah. I just want to, hey, thanks to everybody for watching these. Uh, we've had a lot of fun doing them. We were going to do a walk and talk, but uh, those things will go about 40 minutes. We're going pretty long here anyway, but. Uh, yeah, we appreciate it. We, we get a few people coming up and say, you know, they like watching what we do. And honestly, I didn't know if anyone watched it. So it's cool to uh, have some positive feedback and we appreciate it. You know, give us some negative feedback too, but more positive, if, if anything, keep the negative. I haven't so. heard anything positive. <laughs> no, no, just me. They like me more, but uh, yeah, we appreciate it. And uh, thanks very much for having us at all these races. and. And uh, you know it's been a, a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, and thanks you very, thank you very much to FXR Moto for uh, for their support for it, and uh, we look forward to doing more stuff like this with Arena Cross Supercross coming up. We'll uh, be sure we'll be there. Yeah, first weekend of September. All right, thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you at the races.